Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various type of wind for the Sharuba Springs 9 hole cup here for Gold Clash the game video is sponsored by Gold Clash and Playdemic and before we start don't forget to subscribe to the channel also visit goldclashtommy.com for more Gold Clash related content for free you can get the best tournament and tour guides on patreon.com slash goldclashtommy link directly in the description down below and please mark the date the 22nd of December in your calendar then we will be having a stream where we will have our Christmas quiz where you can win an iPad mini 5 make sure you follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance, the elevation adjustment, what ball and club type I do suggest you to play with. If you have any questions, send an email to support at goldclashtommy.com or make a comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and let's go to hole number one. Let's kick it off with hole number one. We start with four and a half bar top spin, one bar side spin to the left. Ball guidelines straight down the fairway in complete maximum distance. We're playing with a quasar, which is a power one ball. Adjust max plus 10, then you push up to max, and then it's time to take our shot. We're looking to get this ball as far down the fairway possible here. So we want the ball to bounce and then to roll as far as possible. If you experience headwind with your drive, it is recommended to go up and play with a katana instead. Why? It's because I want you to use as little overpower, if any overpower, possible. Second shot, we are looking to be in absolute minimum distance of our club. You can see here that I'm going towards absolute minimum distance, but then I have to move up because otherwise we would be having a problem as we do have tailwind. If we have a crosswind or a headwind, we could, st we could continue to stay in minimum distance line to play from there. Minimum distance minus 10%. And if you do have a long iron that do have below 4.0 ball guideline, you need to make sure that you aim short in line. And the reason for that is that you otherwise will come in way too hot and you will most likely bounce at the pin and go out so with the goliath level six here i'm leaving the ball guy line approximately one green square short of pin and the goliath has a 3.5 or 3.6 in ball guideline if i'm not mistaken so this is hole number one very good chance for making an eagle For hole number two, we will be playing the first of the par threes. I'm using four bars of backspin, one bar of side spin to the right. And here I'm trying to aim so the ball guideline is pointing towards the pin. If you have the possibility to play with a Grizzly level seven or better, that is going to be far superior any other long iron here from the front tee. As the thing is though, that you will be getting a good ball guideline. And that is what we lack here. And that's why this is somewhat of a guesswork on if we are actually aiming for the pin or if we are not. Maximum distance plus 20. Marlin ball is what I'm using because I do not believe in the necessity of using a better ball. There may be a couple of you on uh, wondering why don't I play the rough bump on the left with my long iron. There is two reasons for that. One, we have to play on such a minor, minor spot in the rough that a great right is 100% going to miss the rough. And I feel that that is going to be a little bit too much now, especially when we don't know the wind. Second of all, it is we're playing with a long iron that generally has a bad accuracy. There isn't like the general mass that do have a high level Grizzly or a B-52 with a good accuracy. And that is also then a problem as aiming for a very tiny spot, a great right will be, you know, will be danger and you will go out of bounds. For hole number three, we're going to play a tough par five. We play medium distance, no elevation for the drive, four and a half bar topspin and two bars of side spin to the left. Why not use more than four and a half bars? It's because we don't want to roll too far. Because if we roll too far, we're actually gonna have a longer way uh, to play for our second shot. So we really need to think about that. So we're just getting it down the fairway, and this is actually a perfect position. 
380 yards. Second shot, we're looking to play with a 10% over adjustment. And now you can see that we have a little, little typo there. And we're going to remove the medium there to put down maximum instead. Obviously, we're going to play maximum distance of our shot. Adjust push up to max and then we're gonna have to gamble we're gonna have to go with max over power and a tiny bit of curl to the left to keep ourselves away from the rough on the right hand side i'm using as much top spin possible combined with the two bars of side spin and now my goal is to get as far up as possible to try to get myself an eagle this is going to be a tough one because obviously with max over power with clubs with bad accuracy we could be having a really tough time hitting perfect and that could reward that not reward us but that could risk us getting into the rough directly and then the eagle is going to be very difficult to get so third shot is what we're gonna look at and that is going to be an uphill shot okay so we're playing it uphill and we're playing with our thorn and now we're playing in minimum distance but it could be equally a medium distance club as well here for us so we really need to just have that in mind and medium distance could be minimum distance as well to get here for this shot so we really need to pay attention to our club distance and make sure that we do adjust it properly the thing that we need to once again have in mind is that we're playing uphill and the ball will therefore be less affected by the wind unfortunately i do hit great here otherwise with a perfect we would see this ball coming nicely to the pin here for a lovely eagle but th that is a big reason why this hole becomes so difficult because you have three shots you need to do well not just two as we normally have to do to get an eagle on a par five so be very careful, be very focused, and getting an eagle here will definitely be an advantage towards many of your opponents. For hole number four, we're going to play another tough par three. And once again, especially when we cannot play with a long iron that do give us a good ball guideline. In tailwind or crosswind, we can play with a quasar ball otherwise shoots a katana if you do have a headwind so you're not gonna struggle going to have to use overpower and go in between clubs i'm using three bars of backspin then a little side spin to the right ball guideline pointing towards the hole maximum distance plus 15 is what i'm looking for here and then obviously we need to hit perfect so the ball is bouncing nicely on the fairway getting a very high bounce and every time you do have a high bounce the ball will be affected a little bit more by the wind than normal getting it very close but once again as we do not have a good ball guideline meaning we don't have 4.0 or better it's going to be very difficult to maintain a consistency in getting this one to drop and that's why it's always harder to play with a long iron than it is to play with for an example a sniper For hole number five, we will find ourselves with another really good attempt to make an eagle. And here I'm using my quarterback and a power one side spin two ball, which is the Quasar. Two bars of side spin to the right, and I'm also using one to two bars of backspin, depending on what type of wind angle I'm going to have. Now I do have tailwind, and in tailwind and crosswind, I would stick with the Quasar. If I do have a headwind, I would go up and play with a katana to prevent myself from having to use overpower. Maximum distance with no elevation for the drive. And then we will let the ball carry down the fairway, bouncing on the fairway, rolling down this slope that we do have here and put ourselves in a very nice position for a sniper rough bump. 300 yards exactly on the dot and now we do have a sniper and here we will be playing somewhere between medium and maximum distance of our club. It's very important that you do measure Every time you're going to take this shot to decide or to make sure that you, you adjust for the correct club distance. I'm using a 10% over adjustment for this shot. And now we need to really have in mind here that if we do have tailwind, we may need to push up our target a little bit after we have adjusted. Because we do adjust from a higher to a lower point. And in the Golf Clash world, that means that we will lose this <coughs> distance. And that is also the reason that we will see our ball go both to the right 
and also short of pin because we balance very short into the rough we don't get the air time that we're looking for and therefore not really the rollout either that we're looking for however though this rough bump is far superior any other route on this hole and that is why i'm suggesting that for hole number five For hole number six, we will be playing a drive that is not as easy as it looks. And it's because we are going to try to use a club that do gives us uh, power, but also some type of accuracy. The quarterback would be good, and I would say it would be better if we could play with the quarterback in level eight. And that is why I'm going towards the big topper here in the end to get myself some top spin but also uh, with some curl. Because the thing that I'm looking for here is to bounce on the fairway over to the fairway that you can see on the top right now on the game screen. You can see our opponent's logo there, and that is one way to lay off. But the problem with that is that you're gonna have a really difficult time to get the ball to green if you choose that route. Side spin three ball is gonna be really helpful and we're looking to bounce once again on the fairway over to the other fairway and to gain as much distance possible there to help us for the second shot. Now, we are not done. So the thing that happens here now is that we're having the big dog towards the pin area. And here we could obviously play with the sniper, especially if we manage to do the drive correct. We can then bounce with the sniper over the rough. But at the same time though, we need to make sure that if we do clip the rough with our drive, like with the second bounce with the ball, it's most definitely going to be a big problem for us with the power. And therefore I want to take the safe way here to just use the club that gives me the most power to make sure that I'm always going to get the eagle. Because that is what I'm in the end are looking for here. Bouncing there, you can see there is a little glitch roll there, but lucky enough we stay on the fairway so have in mind that that is there as well we're playing that shot uphill minus 20 percent and the ball will not be affected as much by the wind please have that in mind because it's otherwise very easy to over adjust that shot massively For hole number seven, we're looking to play with a power two ball here with our quarter back. You can see here that we're not anywhere near our max distance of our club, and that is how it's supposed to be. Four bars of backspin, two bars of side spin to the right. Look how far I leave the tip of the ball guideline here in tailwing away from the top rough. Adjustment should be a medium distance with a 20% over adjustment. Then we're going to take our shot and we're looking to just position ourselves nicely with our drive. You can see here we roll in a perfect distance. We don't want to go further. We don't want to go shorter. 243 yards is a really good yardage. From there, we will be playing with our sniper. You can see that I'm playing with sniper level 6, which is a very short uh, wood uh, like which is a very short wood club in terms of power so here we really need to pay attention to what club we're having based on what club distance we are going to choose now i'm using spin to pin based on the top of the blue ring to be just by the edge of the rough so position the top of the blue ring by the edge of the rough then you adapt both side spin and back spin slash top spin depending on what you need to the pin Medium distance with a 30% over adjustment. You can see how lovely this ball comes in here. And have in mind that this shot is played massively downhill, but the value in playing this route that I'm doing here is due to the fact that we play a linear way and therefore an easier way to replicate this shot and therefore a much better outcome in the long run on hole number seven. For hole number eight, the final of the par threes, yes, there is a rough bump, but we're not going to attempt that, especially when we do have such a bad accuracy on our long iron, and that's going to be a massive problem if we just hit great. So we go one bar of backspin, two bars of side spin to the left, leaving the ball guideline short of pin. And once again, as I've said for the other two par threes as well, when we play Shiruba Springs, we play with a long iron. And if you do not have a Grizzly level seven plus or a B52 level seven plus, you are in a far uh, disadvantage because you do not have a ball guideline to follow. And then it becomes a big amount of guesswork. 
I play maximum distance plus 20, need a little bit less backspin here or to move our target a little bit further up for a better wrestle. But once again, this is a difficult par three. I'm not expecting this one to drop all the time. And the rough bump could be considered an option, but have in mind, if you attempt the rough bump, you will not survive a great ball. For hole number nine, we will play a very interesting way here. First and foremost, we use the big topper as a driver both for the first and the second shot we're looking to use a lot of topspin here because we obviously want the ball to go as far as possible when we are having a tailwind here i would recommend to not use more than a power one ball because otherwise you will go in between clubs and that will be a problem mean minimum distance with no elevation here is what i'm going and then it's time obviously to take my shot perfect ball and we see the ball here traveling down and it bouncing nice, nicely on the fairway over to the other fairway and then it rolls down, you know, as far as possible as already explained. Now, second shot, we are going to just go for green. Hole number nine is not a hole where we play for an albatross and the reason for that is actually that tiny little bunker that stands in our way, as you can see there just before the pin. Because then the way to play here is actually just to play uh, by using a curl shot to the green and here I'm using top spin on my horizon so this is a shot that is possible to be played with whatever horizon you're having if you don't have a horizon you should in that case be playing with whatever other wood club you have that gives you the most top spin one ball of curl outside the adjustment ring to the right and have in mind we're only playing to get this ball down to the green area and we don't want to go too Far. If you go too far, which we're close on doing, then we will roll down into the rough to 100%, and then that's going to be tough. And if I could shoot this way and find myself with a short eagle putt on this one all the time, I will take that every single time as well, because this is you know in whatever way we want to see it a general eagle hole, not a hole for albatross. We will see more birdies, way more birdies on this hole than albatrosses. Thank you so much everybody for watching this uh, playthrough for the Shiriba Springs 9 hole cup before the tournament has started. So this is not going to be the win that we're going to have. That's why I will be doing a new playthrough once the tournament starts. But this is made to provide you with the best qu uh, quality content before the tournament starts. So you can start by taking notes and be prepared on you know how to play the holes and what elevation it is what club what ball you know all that type of information is super duper valuable before you enter the tournament in the end though be sponsored by gold clash and play demic and get your tournament package on patreon.com slash gold clash tommy thank you so much and good luck in the shiruba springs nine hole cup